Brent Hampton, Justin Porterfield, and Jamel Spearman are our officials. Brent Hampton set to toss it up, and we are just about ready to go with game number two, the Cards' first three games of the regular season here in the KFCM Center. There's Sky Clark with the ball. Had a big dunk late in that game the other night. Their one-point win over UMBC. J.J. Trainer with the deciding basket with just about eight seconds left. Global's going to have to step it up tonight. They're going to have to play better, especially on the defensive end. And uh, Sky Clark looking like he was trying to get, maybe, was that a lob? Let's take a look at their starters real quick. This is Michael Chait down the lane. He is fouled. Uh, Hunter Huff, a transfer from VMI uh, with Dan Earl, their coach. He transferred, sat out last year. Then Miles Chay, a freshman from California. Sam Alexis, Tyler Millen, transfer from Middle Tennessee. And we have already talked about Jan Zedek who is a graduate transfer from Pepperdine. That was Huff with the air ball three in the corner. And Brandon Huntley had to have come off a 10 rebound performance in the opener. Comes down with that. With Cards, same starting five we saw the other night in the opener. Scott Clark, Mike James, 25 points, 10 rebounds, as we said. Trey White, Brandon Huntley Hatfield, and Dennis Evans. And Huntley Hatfield, not a bad looking shot. No, line, but you know what? I like it. He's aggressive on the defensive end, like he was in the second half against UMBC, and then goes to the basket. He's going to have to play well tonight because of the size of some of these guys that you that uh, Chattanooga has. Chief for the three in the corner from Tyler Millen. This team will fire up some threes. Their coach Dan Earl. His team's always among the tops in the nation. As we see Mike James hit a three, and that's something Jody in the opener. Louisville only hit two, and Mike James wasn't one of the two. He did, a great, he did a good job of everything, or the Cards did a good job of some things. Not hitting uh, threes in the opener, 2 of 14, and they get their uh, first one to go here tonight. As you see, Scott Clark just finding James, stepping back and burying that. Mike James is a totally different player this season for Louisville. He's finally all the way healthy and in great, great shape. Did everything but hit threes in that opener. Chattanooga man-to-man in the cards the other night. When UMBC played man-to-man, -man, they were able to get the basket pretty much at will. That's how they scored 94 points without only hitting the two threes and shooting pretty poorly from the line, too, except for James. Three, Sam Alexis, the big fella, knocks it down. They're going to shoot him. Now, they only hit eight in their opener, but last year they averaged, what, 10, 11 a game, uh, and that's pretty much been the recipe for Dan Earl throughout his career, their head coach who we'll talk about through the course of the game in his second season at Chattanooga. They're going to fire it up, and Alexis gets the first one to go down. All SoCon freshman team last year for Alexis. As Clark gets a good look and misses, but Huntley Hatfield there for the offensive rebound, and Dennis Dunk is what we get right away. Great job by Huntley Hatfield getting the offensive rebound and then right to Clark who saw Dennis Evans alone and uh, has every basket he's got almost a pretty much a dunk. Connor Huff to the basket. Evans had a chance to block it but couldn't quite get it and Huff's able to get that. The smallest guy on the floor able to get the paint and score and we are all even at five here in the early going. Huntley Hatfield's got a major advantage down there with Huff, but he's not in there posting up. He was at first, kind of gave up on it. Now James all the way to the basket. Throws it up, gets it back. Ball knocked out of bounds. It'll be a little ball. Seven seconds on the shot clock. Chattanooga led the nation in three-pointers made per game last year. 11.4. Clark gets the shot off, but can't hit it. Alexis the rebound, and here comes Che. A lot of talk in Louisville shoot around today, just being patient on the offensive end and then on defense, just making sure you know where guys are like that. You don't leave them open for a three. That missed one there by Millen. Boy, Che got in the lane, looked up and saw Dennis Evans and thought better of it. Yeah, I'm not going to go against the 7-1 guy. Interesting to see how Trey White responds. Um, Huntley Hatfield, the aggressive move to the basket, and I'm not sure what that was when he got in there, but it was half good. Zita kind of goes into Huntley Hatfield, but can't get the basket to go. And still all even at five in the early going. Cards two for eight from the field. Now two for nine. We're going to get a jump ball possession arrow to Chattanooga with 16.07 left to play here in the first half. Not a great start for either one of these teams. 
as I, uh, I guess they had already switched. I'm sorry, they had already switched the position. No, 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 no. They had not. It's a jump ball. They call it a jump ball. No, I was going to say. Oh, okay. I'm not why everybody. I'm not sure why everybody went okay. to this. Well, they're all the looking like they're giving Louisville the ball to no, that. But all looking three, at the possession yeah. area. The three referees are saying the other way, so they're just all kind of looking around. Here we go. Now, now they will switch the arrow. It's Jay takes it on the baseline and gets it right inside, and James got beat to the basket there. And that'll be Demetrius Davis, who started in their first game. But did not start tonight. He has checked into the game for Millen. Shea misses. Alexis can't get it, but Zedek does. Zedek in the paint. He can finish. His dad, a center on the UCLA National Championship team back in 1995, a first round NBA draft pick. The first first round NBA draft pick from Czechoslovakia. Zedek on the uh, Czech Republic, uh, the team that won the uh, that won a gold medal at the uh, World Championship Games as Sky Clark throws it away. And Louisville, a sloppy start for the Cards, just two for ten, and they trail 7-5. Uh, and their mascot, the scrappy mocking bird. So that is a bird foot that you see on their jerseys there. You see their head coach, Dan Earl, he played at Penn State, was a Four-year starter there, third all-time in assists in Penn State history. And I mentioned Chattanooga led the nation last year in three-pointers made per game at 11.4. He was the coach at VMI two years ago. They led the nation in three-point three-pointers made per game at 12 and a half. So they are going to shoot some triples and find out if we can guard him. And on cue, Jan Zedek with the three out of the timeout misses it, but Trey White can't come up with the offensive rebound. Che does, and he misses another one. Zedek another offensive rebound. Back out to Hunter Huff. He'll try the triple. And the third time is the charm for the Mox. They lead at 10-5 here in the early going. Louisville, 2 of 10 from the field. And Louisville with Huntley Hatfield out of there. He had gotten four rebounds for the Cards. And uh, that time, a core four and Trainer checking in. The Cards cannot come up with a rebound. And that's going to be an offensive foul on J.J. Trainer as he tries to give Tyler Johnson the screen. But uh, it, he was moving as we see the, the replay here, Kent. Zedek, uh, you're always here, you know, it's a good time to get a three off an offensive rebound. Zedek got a couple of them. They got a couple tries and able to hit the second win there. Uh, number 34, Randy Brady in the game for the Mox, setting that cards lineup. Mike James, Tyler Johnson, the freshman, Emmanuel Acura for J.J. Trainer and Trey White. Zedek going to get another three try, misses, but Acura four gets the rebound. Have not seen Trey White. He's 0 for 1 from the field right now. Kenny Payne kind of called him out after the game the other night, right away, saying he told him, "We're not going to play. You're not going to play selfish here." And White is letting it come to him a little bit. Kicks it over to the trainer in the corner. Drives into a double team as the ball taken away by Demetrius Davis. And the Mox will try to build on what is a 10-5 lead. Huff right down the lane. Zedek comes up with it and can't get the jump hook to go over a core four. He did a good job of pretty much yeah. staying big there. Nice job of a core four of staying big and just going straight up and coming down with the rebound. It's Trey White. Still waiting for it. Now he tries to take the hit. Late whistle. He's going to get the foul on Davis and he's going to get two free throws. Yeah, and Trey White's got to let it come to him. I thought the other night he really did force a lot of things on the offensive end, and then he was in some foul trouble as well and just didn't kind of get into the flow of the game. Well, ever. And we saw, you know, on that last possession, Cards had the ball, could have held it for one. He went to the basket and then didn't get a great shot off the side of the backboard, but did get the ball back. He did, somehow, some and, way. And got that assist to J.J. Trainer for the winning basket in that 94-93 win. And, he knocks in the first free throw here. So a good start. Cards now uh, one for one from the line, which is quite a bit better than the other night in their opener. By the way, Tyler Johnson at the last timeout did check in for Sky Clark. So Johnson in. I do think we're going to see some Tyler and Sky together. Kenny Payne really liked what we, what he saw from that. He doesn't want to do it all of the time because he needs to have someone as a backup for the uh, for Sky Clark. But I think you'll see some of those guys play together a little bit more as we move along in the season. A two for two start at the lineup, going 24 for 39 the other night, and that's counting the 13 for 14 from Mike James. Brady, a nice catch inside by Alexis, but then he throws it away as he tried to get it to Davis in the corner. Actually, a great idea there, just the way he had to throw that ball. 
I don't think Davis was ever going to be able to catch it. Huntley Hatfield heading, oh, he's, oh, he's heading over the bike. So he's headed back down the tunnel. Inside a quarter four with a nice catch and the foul inside on Rudy Fitzgibbons, who's in the game for uh, for the Mox. I thought a quarter four. Uh, I thought he, uh, as far as the same with Huntley Hatfield, it was the second half for a quarter four and Huntley Hatfield the other night. They were both kind of lost in the first half, but uh, he had. Uh, Titus ten minutes, eight, eight, eight points, eight yeah. points, and six rebounds in ten minutes, and I just thought very active and showing a physical presence. That's what Louisville's got to have in, in able in order for this team to exceed some expectations and to be a good basketball team. Uh, Huntley Hatfield and a core four have got to show that physical presence. I feel like a core four gives you that pretty much every time. He's active. Um, Huntley Hatfield, it was I thought that was kind of new the other night, but he's, we've seen a little bit of it tonight as well. James to the basket, throws up the left-hander in the paint and gets it to go. What a great shot, but it was a good look for him. And uh, uh, you, he also had Trenger wide open there, but he takes it himself and gets the bucket. Huff goes baseline and kicks it in the corner for another triple try for the Mox. And then the littlest guy comes up with the rebound again, and we're going to try that again. And another miss. Brady, or another offensive rebound. Get a lot of these long rebounds. Huff hits the three, and Johnson with the foul. And Hunter Huff will have a chance to complete a four-point play here. And that is just uncalled for for Louisville. That is five offensive rebounds already for Chattanooga. As you see, just out hustle. It's Trey White and Trainer getting over the bench, and uh, Coach not happy with Trainer. A couple of those where Trainer just doesn't get a body on his guy. Two trips down the floor with at least two offensive rebounds for Chattanooga now. Honor Huff sat out last year because of the rule in the Southern Conference. He came with Coach Earl from BMI. So he sat out last year, misses the free throw. They've been five for seven in their opener. Five ten sophomore from Brooklyn, New York. Back pass there. Davis with the steal. Kicks it over to Huff for another triple try. And back to back threes for Honor Huff. And it's 16 9 mocks in the early going. They're going to fire it up. Four for 12 from three already. Mike James with his second triple of the night. Once again, much like the opener, he's carrying the cards in the early going. He has eight of their 12 points. They trail at 16-12. Brady drives in the paint, deflection by Davis, and then he leaks out, takes the pass. James can't miss it. Curtis Williams with the rebound. A the hustle basket. play from the freshman Curtis Williams getting the first bucket for him as he hustles down the floor, gets the offensive board. And the crowd responds. The fans who are here, that's what they want to see. They want to see the effort at the defensive end. And then James called for the foul as Davis tries to go baseline on him. But Chattanooga. Some hot shooting. We knew they'd be shooting some threes. They're four for 12 early, and they lead Louisville 16 to 14. Faust, he has eight points. You see the cards. Look at the guys in their debut. Tyler Johnson had 12, Trey White 11, Sky Clark 11. First game in at least 27 years with three players scoring in double figures in their debuts. But Mike James led the way with 25 in that game and has. Eight of their 14 tonight, and on the bench with two fouls. They got a foul just before we went to break. Honor Louisville. Huff, number three, with 11 points for Chattanooga in the early going. Louisville working a lot in their shoot around today on keeping their hands up as Huff misses that one, rattles in and out, and a Corfo comes down with it and tries to save it right to Zedek. And, and Kent working a lot, and, he, and Coach Payne was talking about he, their hands were down in that opener. That's why they got so much foul trouble. Alexis inside over a core four, can't get it to go. Huntley Hatfield the rebound. And the cards with a chance to tie it up or take the lead. Sky Clark, Donalo Yovanovich, Brandon Huntley Hatfield, Curtis Williams, and Emmanuel Okorafor on the court right now for Louisville. I love what I've seen from Huntley Hatfield so far. He did miss that shot, but he is 
got the aggressive attack mentality right here as he backs it down misses the shot but still Kent it's aggressive and that's what you want to see for him and he already has five rebounds Dennis Evans set to check into the next dead ball and three by Fitzgibbons rattles off Curtis Williams had a, a big game in his first game. Scott Clark goes to the basket, gets the foul, and he'll get a chance to try and complete a three-point play. So he has tied us up at 16 and can put the cards in front with 10-15 to go. As Dennis Evans checks into the game. Emmanuel Kuhl will go to the bench. Lovanovich. Scott Clark to the basket. Lovanovich getting a little excited there. I think he's going to, uh, Sky Clark is going to have to keep attacking like that. He hasn't shot well. Can't even go back to the two exhibition games. Even to the red-white scrimmage, Sky has not kind of come into his own as far as he can shoot it. He's just going to have to keep attacking like that. An 8-0 run for the cards over the last two-plus minutes. Clark had been three for eight from the line in the opener, but hits that one. Off down the lane. Try to get it to Lexus, but... Lex is able to come up with it eventually. Now he's got Evans on him, and he's going to kick it back out for the triple try. And another three, and that is Tyler Millen, the transfer from Middle Tennessee. Ten new players on this Chattanooga roster. One of the reasons why they're picked to finish fifth in the Southern Conference. And then we see Curtis Williams, maybe a little quick with that shot. Ivanovic's got position inside there for that offensive rebound. And Ken, it doesn't matter who it is. They all know, and you see Alexis there. He's already got a three. He backs Dennis Sevens down and kicks it out for the bucket. All of these guys shoot the three. It doesn't matter if it's one, two, three, four, or five position. You've got to know where they are because they're all shooters. And so far, Louisville not doing a good job on the defensive end. Five of 15 for Chattanooga. Already five triples for them. Louisville with two, but Mike James hit a both, and he's on the bench right now in foul trouble. Is Scott Clark drove baseline. Looks like he took a he, hit. Yeah. This guy's still wincing in pain a little bit. Not where you want to get hit. 9.33 to go. 19-17. Mox lead it. Brent Hampton doing some uh, cleanup there. He's telling Sam Alexis to tuck in the jersey. Guy passes up the three steps in. Jovanovic down the lane, and the left hander can't get it to go. The tip by Huntley Hatfield to keep that it's, alive. It's, it, he's active. He's making a difference for this Louisville team on both ends right now. Oh, not on the same page there. Evans rolled and looked like Scott Clark thought he had him, but Evans, I think he got an elbow from maybe Zedek in the back. He did. And that's why he couldn't jump for that. As yeah, he was with indicating. A, Zedek with a really nice job there of just knocking him off his line a little bit. And that's what Dennis is going to have to learn uh, to be a little stronger in that one. Nice play there by Scott Clark. So he get taps the ball away from Millen. 16 seconds on the shot clock for Chattanooga. Michael Chase set to throw it in on the baseline. As Demetrius Davis back in the game for them, number two. Sam Alexis heads to the bench for the box. Chay out to Millen. Zedek guarded by Huntley Hatfield. You'll see it a lot. They drive, pass up what looked to be open layups to get it back out for the three. Less, they're not going to get the shot off. Shot clock violation. That's one where Zedek, you don't want to pass that one up when he had a pretty good shot, a pretty good look. I'm sorry, Shea had a pretty good look in the corner, and he's telling the coaches, hey, that's my fault. But Louisville, a good job on defense. Look at this. Huntley look at the closeout. Look at the closeout there by Curtis Williams. Scott Clark with the closeout. That's what Kenny Payne wants to see from this team on the defensive end. If they're going to be successful, that's what they have to do defensively. Number zero, Noah Melson, a freshman from Douglasville, Georgia, in the game for the Mox. J.J. Trainer back in for the cards. Clark gets to the basket and, and shuffled his feet once he got in the paint. Yeah, he slipped a little bit. He did. It looked like he. It looked like he slipped and. Uh, yeah. Turnover for the cards. Turnover number, number six. six. Been a bit of an issue, but not as bad as it was in the opener. They, they've improved. 
Curtis Williams, though, I feel like, you know, we saw him in the red-white scrimmage. He forced it the first half, came out in the second half, looked great. Played really well against Simmons. He can shoot it. He's a guy who, if he could get on a little street, he hasn't had a chance yet. Okay, we'll get another corner three missed by Davis and another yeah, rebound for Huntley Hatfield. So far, he's the MVP tonight just because he's being aggressive. As, uh, Curtis Williams, nice job taking the ball off the bounce there and drawing a foul as the cards have cut it to within two. Chattanooga with 5-3 so far, up 1917. One point win over UMBC here on Monday night. A game they trailed by eight at the half, outscored the Retrievers 54-45 in the second half, and Mike James with a huge game. 25 points, 10 rebounds, his first double-double. J.J. Trainer with a game-winning dunk off the pass from Trey White with eight seconds remaining as the card shot 59% in the second half of that game to get the win and get Kenny Payne 1-0 for this season. Trying to get to 2-0 here. Sky Clark, Donalo Jovanovic, Brandon Huntley Hatfield, who has how many rebounds, Cody? He already has eight. His career high is 12, and Huntley Hatfield being very aggressive. And again, struggling on the offensive end 0 for 3, but they've all been good attacking, attacking for him, as you see, eight rebounds tonight already. J.J. Trainer and Curtis Williams, six on the shot clock for the cards. Huntley have to have a lob inside the trainer. The catch, and he can't get an angle to get it up on the basket. And here come the mocks. Four different Chattanooga players have hit triples in this one. They're five of 16 from three. Louisville, two of three from deep, but both those by Mike James, who has, is on the bench still with those two personal fouls. Both teams with five team fouls. Honor Huff down the lane, the spin a little bit out of control. Pretty good defense there by Curtis Williams, and the Cards with a chance again to tie or take the lead. Williams straight line drive to the basket, puts it up and in. Oh my gosh, it's unbelievable. The Curtis Williams on the defensive end, then on the offensive end, the freshman doing what he's supposed to do, and, uh, and that's coming through for his team. Boy, that was a nice drive. Shea will try the triple from the corner, can't get it to go. Jovanovic with the decent box out, but Millen still gets the offensive rebound. The follow-away jumper on the baseline is an air ball. Jovanovic runs the floor well. Are we gonna get a we're gonna get a block on Huff? Was that what we got there? I don't know, I'm waiting for Brent Hampton to No, he, he Oh, it's they, no good. No, the basket's not good. Jamel Spearman called it out front a little bit there, but uh, it is the block. Jovanovic aggressive taking it. That was the first personal on Huff, but the sixth team foul on the Mox. And then, what is that, a makeup call? <laughs> I think, that, is, I think that was... Glenn just checks into the game, and right away he gets called for the offensive foul on that baseline out-of-bounds play. And there's Brent Hampton saying, I think I had that other call. Let's see if we got it here. Uh, I don't know about that. Not exactly as uh, dramatic as that James Madison Kent State play last night. If you saw, or not, uh, was it James? Yeah, James Madison Kent State. James Madison who beat Michigan State in their opener. Right. Yes. Last second pushed off last night as they won again. Honor off another air ball and Huntley Hatfield with another rebound. Jody Trey White back in the game. I was going to ask you about him. He had been on the bench for a while. Looked a little timid and comes in and turns it over. And, that, and that's what you don't want to do if you're Trey White. Your, your attack, your, your good stuff is mid-range game. He, that's one where he probably should have pulled up right there and taken it. Huff with another three, and that was on Trey White. And that is the fourth triple of the game for Honor Huff. He's missed several He's five, shots. Ten. He's missed several shots at the basket where his air ball and he hits threes. That play might have been called Chattanooga. And then White with the offensive rebound flips it up off the glass and he'll get a chance to shoot a couple free throws. And that's here's, where his two points have come from. Here's the, here's the steal from Davis as he gets out and goes in transition and come down and it ends up being a half three again. Again, he's five for nine from the field, four from six from three, Kent. And his two air balls have been coming inside, inside the lane. I think he needs to stay behind the three-point arc, huh? And he really shouldn't be able to get a three off over the six, seven Trey White either. White two for two from the line so far tonight. Makes it three for three for his three points. Will James sit out the remainder of the first half, you think, Jody? 
I think we're probably going to see him, yes, as long as he is right now. Let's see, 22-20. Uh, I think it was 11-29 maybe. It was. Now. I think they'll try to get him to the halftime. Huff is 4 of 6 from 3. The rest of his team 2 for 12 as Trey White makes both of the free throws and pulls the cards within 22-21. Cards have done a pretty good job on Zedek coming off his 25-point effort. He only has two points, one of five from the field here in the early going. Shea brings it up closely guarded, and then the backdoor cut. He tried to get it to Davis, but threw it out of bounds. That's another thing that Coach Earl loves, that backdoor cut. We see it a lot. And you saw it a lot with his VMI teams. Now you saw it last year. They're going to try to do that time and time again. Louisville, that one very lucky because it could have been an easy layup. Speaking of backdoor cuts, the next game for this Chattanooga team, Bellarmine on Tuesday night at Chattanooga. Louisville, of course, will play the Knights on November 30th. Sky Clark gets up there. That ball went between the legs of Caleb Bland and Huff with another three on the break, and he hits it. That is five three-pointers for Honor Huff. He has 17 points, and it's 25-21. Huntley Hatfield to the basket, and I believe he was in the restrict. Was he not in the restricted area? Kind of Jamil Spearman calling the charge on Huntley Hatfield, but it was close. Tough to tell from our angle. Let's look at it. He no, he not. just got out. Pretty good defense there by Randy Brady to get out of the restricted area and draw the charge on Huntley Hatfield. His first personal. He has nine rebounds already. As Jody mentioned, his career high 12. 25-21. Huff tries to go baseline. He needs it. He's wide open. Huff is wide open in the corner, but Johnson gets to him. Chase hits one inside the arc. And a weird, different kind of lineup here for Louisville with Glenn and Tyler Johnson with Sky Clark, Trey White, and Dennis Evans. You wonder how long Kenny Payne can afford to keep James on the bench because White misses. Evans can't get the rebound. You know why? Because he was boxed out by Honor Huff. Che with the deep three try can't get it to go. And another rebound for Trey White. Now White, a little more aggressive, can't get that one to go off the glass. Evans gets the rebound and brings it down low enough to send it in, and Trey White hit by Bryant Brady as he goes to the basket, and White's four for four from the line, headed back that way. And Kent, uh, Trey White continues to struggle with Louisville. 27-21, Traylon Chattanooga. Honor Huff Show here at the KFC Yum Center. The Chattanooga guards six for ten for the field, five for 10 from three here as Chattanooga leads Louisville 27-21. Jody, he's hitting them all over the place. Yeah, it has been the Honor Up show. Six of 10, like you said, five of seven. A couple of short ones that he missed, but he's not missing from long range. You see there, 17 points. The rest of his team is four of 21. The rest of the team, he's seven of 20 from three. The rest of the team is two of 13. And you can see why he is a first-team preseason All-Southern Conference selection. And one uh, one constant theme with those five threes, Kent, Louisville either had, he was wide open, got one off of transition, or Louisville had a guy running at him late. They're just getting too late to Hunter Huff. Cards with a 22-17 advantage on the board, and both teams have seven offensive rebounds, which is a little surprising to me because there's – there's kind of stand out. They're getting threes off their offensive rebounds. It's yes, but they, we should also mention that they were they were ahead six to two in offensive rebounds. So Louisville has done a better job here lately. White knocks down another free throw. All six of his points from the line. Six for six from the line. Mike James still on the bench with those two fouls and his eight points in the first eight minutes of this game. But the Cards have been able to at least maintain relatively close range. Brady, the backdoor cut, the nice dish, and the freshman, Noah Melson, is going to go to the line for two free throws. Coming up at halftime, uh, make sure to hang around because we've got new head coaches in the ACC. Who's the team to be on the lookout for? And, of course, first half highlights and stats. But some UL students, you'll see them in the studio here. Uh, of course, you know, Joey always say it, the best crew is the best crew. 
appreciate Bobby Blankenship and the entire Jeremy Noah and that whole team over there. And uh, they're working with some students here at U of L now, and it's really impressive the work that these kids are doing as they try to take our jobs. Uh, they're going to say not only take our jobs, but some uh, in studio jobs as well. They do a great job, so stick around at halftime for that. Noah Nelson, the freshman from Douglasville, Georgia, knocks in the second free throw, 28-23. The largest UTC lead has been seven. Chattanooga led it by seven at 16-9. That's courtesy of Ken Horn, the stat man extraordinaire, who's with us here again courtside at the KFC Yum Center. Scott Clark going to dial up the triple. Can't get it to go. And the hold inside on Demetrius Davis as Caleb Glenn goes to the court. And Caleb's all right, and I believe the foul is going to be on Davis, which would give Glenn a chance to shoot some free throws. And we're going to look at that for we're a hook and hold. We're going to look at it for a hook and hold. Oh, I haven't seen a hook we and hold in a, couple it years. in a while, but uh, I saw one in a game. I was watching a game a couple nights ago. wasn't watching last night because we were at a football game last night. Congrats to the Cards, by the way, for winning football. But uh, I watched this the other night, and they showed this. And that's textbook. That is textbook hook and hold. Yeah, I think. <laughs> I say I think. Because you just never know anymore. But it I was do a believe point it of is. emphasis a couple of years ago. They called it, it every was. time down. Um, we'll see what we come up with. If it, if that is in fact the call on Demetrius Davis, uh, the cards are in the bonus. So Caleb Glenn would get a chance to shoot some free throws. And we'll see here. There you go, Jody. Illegal contact caused by hooking an opponent over or under the arm with the clamp there to deceive the official into believing it was caused by the opponent. It's it's this is a different one. Um, Brent Hampton made the call and he was right behind there, so he probably had a better view. No matter no matter what angle you have, he had a better view, and I think it's going to be. Not a hook and hold, just a one and one. So we were wrong again. It, it didn't look all that flagrant. No, but it doesn't have to, though, if you look at the. All right, Caleb Glenn has not scored a point yet as a card, but he's going to get a chance to. The former Louisville male high star who went to La Lumea in Indianapolis uh, or in Indiana last year, a prep school. You love his effort, Jody. He's got a motor that doesn't stop and is, is going to be a player here at Louisville. He's, Misses the first free throw. He is going to be was a card's first free throw miss of the night. He's going to be a player, way. and uh, he's physically ready right now to play, which you don't see from a lot of freshmen. You look at that body; he is ready to play some minutes. Zedek looks like he's zip. shot clock at five. Deflection by Trey White. Huff is going to have to shoot it. That's not what Louisville wants. <laughs> I thought he was, look at Glenn and go way up for the rebound. I, I thought he was going to make that. And again, that's not what Louisville wants him shooting, but I'll, we'll take it from half court pretty much any time. Caleb Gunn's going to continue to get some minutes if he does those kind of things and gets that rebound. White with the miss and... Miller with the rebound for Chattanooga. They lead it 28-23. Brandon Huntley Hatfield set to check in at that ball. Zedek again in the lane, and they keep on swinging it, and they get the three in the corner from Nelson. That's just what they do. You know that's what they're going to do. They have one good shot. They swing it a little bit more, and they get a wide open that, shot. That is their largest lead of the night right now at 31-23 on their eighth triple in the first half. Tyler Johnson all the way to the basket, everything but the finish, but then he gets his own offensive rebound. Trey White, thought he was going to pop the three, but he gets it to Glenn, who gets the shot inside, but can't get it to go. And Caleb Glenn will get a chance now for two free throws at 31-23. Already a big day for Louisville Athletics as the U of L field hockey team opened the NCAA tournament in Evanston, Illinois with a 2-1 win over number eight Iowa, Jody. Yes, and uh, Amy Plum getting it in two, the second overtime. Just two minutes left until they were going to go to a shootout. Louisville advances to the quarterfinals. They'll take on Northwestern Sunday with a spot in the final four on the line. And guess who the only loss Northwestern has this season? To uh, Louisville. Louisville? Yes, one nothing in their first game of the year. Caleb Glenn now 0 for 3 from the line. Goodness. 
So you let Sky Clark, the two transfers who came in here, Jody, who most people expected to be the leaders of this club, one of 11 from the field here in the first half as the Cards trail by eight. That's the same deficit they had at halftime on Monday night to UMBC. Zeta gets in the paint, travels. This is the fifth turnover tonight for Chattanooga. We get J.J. Trainer back in the game, and it seems clear at this point that Mike James will not play the remainder of the first half. He sat down with, I believe it was 11.29 to go with eight points, and the only two threes that Louisville's hit in this first half. And White, Trey White and Scott Clark have got to get out of this offensive funk. They just haven't had any kind of no fluid to their game here in the first couple of games of the season. Johnson trying to get it to Huntley Hatfield. Not a great look. And Che pulls up on the break and hits another three-pointer. That is not a two. Oh, foot on the line. Okay. Just a two-pointer, but still, it's a ten-point lead for Chattanooga with 116 left. We love our house. It's on a great block, tree-lined streets. The neighbors are observant. And we're back at the Sullivan house. It's lawn day, Sheila, and the leaves are piling up. Ugh, bit of an eyesore. I'll say. Dry shave. Interesting technique. That's going to come back to haunt him. Some people clean while they cook, not these folks. At least Geico makes bundling our home and car insurance easy. Saves us a ton. If only they'd bundled the leaves. You know, I wouldn't have pegged these two as yogis. I still don't. For bundling made easy, go to geico.com. Dan Earl and Chattanooga on an 11 2 run over the last four and a half minutes. Michael Che, the pull up jumper, but his foot was on the line, so the lead is 10 right now for the Chattanooga Box here in the KFC Yum Center. They are shooting 35% from the field, but they're 8 for 22 from three, and they're holding Louisville is 26% shooting. And hey, hey, hey. Ken, I will tell you this. Look, Huff, 5 of 8 has been great for Chattanooga. But what I love about this team is the unselfishness you see on the offensive end. It's what Coach Earl wants. They move the ball. They, take, they pass up good shots to get great shots. Sometimes they pass up great shots to get three-pointers. But you know what? They make them, and everybody in their lineup can shoot. And again, Pitt to finish fifth in the Southern Conference, but that was with 10 new players. Demetrius Davis, their only returning starter, has nice play out of the timeout. Curtis Williams in for the easy layup, and he scored a couple baskets here tonight for the Cards as they're back within eight. Shade goes right by Williams, gets in the paint, and then walks. Another turnover, so the Cards will have a chance to cut into this eight-point lead. How about this play, Jody? Yeah, Curtis Williams with, uh, again, being aggressive, attacking, and uh, his versatility. He, uh, before Tyler Johnson got ruled eligible, Curtis Williams was going to be the backup point guard for this team, so he is a guy that can do a little bit of everything. The close out by Zedek prevents the three. Johnson will try the triple, and just a little short off the front of the rim, but... Curtis Williams with the offensive rebound and comes back up and has a knock away by Huff. Huntley Hatfield gets it and puts it in. Was that a rebound? Is that counting his 10th rebound? I'm not sure. I'm but not, he gets the basket. I'm not sure if it is. I don't think that does, but it is a counts as an aggressive, aggressive play is what it was from Huntley Hatfield. Dan Earl with the quick timeout here with 18.4 seconds left. The Cards will have a chance to get one final stop here, Jody. And when you're down 10 just a couple seconds ago, I think they have to feel decent about going into the half if they're only down six well, or less. Well, and Mike James hasn't played for 11 minutes and something seconds. So as you see there, the miss from Johnson. Good job keeping it alive from Williams. He backs it up, knocks it off, and uh, there is Brandon Huntley Hatfield with it. And Williams. He does not appear to get a rebound for that. And no, he does not. But Williams gets credited with his second offensive rebound. The Cards now with 10. Remember, they trailed 6-2 to two offensive rebounds early on in the half. It is now, uh, it is, they, they're now up 10-7 to seven on offensive rebounds. Cards also with 10 second chance points. A 10-8 advantage there. And, and out rebounding the Mox 26-20. All right, Curtis Williams 
Trey White, Brandon Huntley, Hatfield, Scott Clark, and Tyler Johnson on the court for the cards. Here's Zedek, 16 to play, 15 and counting. Honor Huff with 17 points with the ball here to lead the Mox. Gets the pick from Zedek. See if he can get it up and over Huntley Hatfield. He gets the shot off, but can't get it to go. But an offensive rebound. Davis had more time, I think, than he thought as he just threw that up. But the Cards get that defensive stop. And after trailing UMBC by eight and a half on Monday night and coming back to win, Louisville heads to the locker room now with a six-point deficit. Monday night at the half to beat UMBC by one. Didn't get a lot out of Sky Clark in that first half either as he gets in the paint and is able to score right away. And, and that's the thing, nothing from really from Sky Clark, six of six from the line from Trey White, but he's 0 for 4. So if you're Louisville, you have to feel, I mean, you're only, you, you don't have Mike James out there but eight minutes and you don't get much from those two guys. You got to feel halfway like, okay, we're, we're, we're not too far out of this. Clark now two of eight. Of course, Jan Zedek, who had 25 points in their opener, he only had two in that first half. And right away, they're going to get another three by Michael Che. And they're back up by seven. Three's the issue. They had eight in that first half. And Louisville's only two triples. The cards were two from eight from three. And both by Mike James, who I said a minute ago, sat out the last, the last 11 29 of that half. Clark with his second shot. Huff tipped it out to James, who goes aggressively to the basket. And he's going to get a chance to shoot a couple free throws because he was fouled there by Alexis in the paint. The three from Che is uh, as he gets the kick out. As Clark runs by him, and he gets the open three. Che, 6'3", 185-pound senior or a freshman from Los Angeles, played at the Skill Factory Prep, and uh, he at one point was committed to South Florida. Really good, just a, 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 a good all-around guard. That was the second foul on Alexis. James, 13 of 14 from the line the other night, and... You jinxed him. Not a great start tonight. Carts hit their first seven free throws tonight after hitting just 24 of 39 in the win over UMBC. But then Caleb Glennon missed three in a row, and Mike James with the miss, and it's four in a row, and now it's five in a row. And Huntley Hatfield with his tenth rebound. So his second straight ten rebound game to start the season, which is a good thing to see. White the miss in the paint. And Alexis the rebound, and now Chattanooga with a chance to increase what is a seven point lead. Their largest lead of the game has been eight. And Zedek will try the three, can't get it to go. James with the rebound. A lot of contact like there. Hit Huff is going to beat everybody down the court for the lay in. He has 19 points. A rare two-pointer for him. Just his second two-point basket of the night to go with his five, five triples. He has 19 points, and is, this is now the biggest lead of the night for the Mox of Chattanooga at nine points with just under 18 minutes to play, and we're going to get an offensive foul on Sky Clark. I think it was in the paint on the screen. Clark picks up the foul, and uh, there we go. Here's Zedek with it getting out, and Huff, nobody back. The easy layup. He's made five threes, and that one was an easy bucket there for points number 18 and 19. Alexis, the big fellow, try to trip up in the corner, and why not? Everybody's hitting them. That is 10 three pointers tonight for Chattanooga. The crowd getting a little restless here, and the lead is up to 12 with 17.44 left. Chattanooga 41, Louisville 29. It's here at home, and then competition gets a little stiffer on November 19th when they head to Madison Square Garden along with Jody Demling here. By the way, we should pass on our condolences to anyways, Jody Demling and the Cards will take on number 18, Texas uh, in Madison Square Garden. I was about to pass on our condolences to Paul Rogers who had a death in his family. Uh, he's not on the radio tonight. Nick Curran doing the Louisville local radio broadcast. 41-29, Chattanooga with the lead. The Mox have hit 10 at three-pointers already in this game. Louisville's only hit two. You thought Louisville, after shooting 30% in the first half, as Trey White gets in the paint and is able to score his first field goal tonight. They were obviously going to have to shoot a little better to overcome that six-point deficit. Well, he started off 
just one for four in the second half, but White gets the basket to go, and Louisville's cut the lead back to 10, and we're going to get a moving screen there on Alexis. That's been a uh, point in a lot of emphasis in a lot of games that I've watched so far this first week. I've seen more moving screens than, uh, that was than we've had. They called that on Che, though. Did they? Still, offensive foul, a lot of them. Here we go, Clark Clay White, Brandon Huntley Hatfield already with 10 rebounds, Donna Sevens, and Mike James, who scored eight points all in the first eight minutes of the game. White inside gets that to go. Didn't even look like he had control of it, really, but he gets the foul on Millen, and he'll get a chance to complete the three-point play, and a little could be a 5-0 run here for Trey White. And look, Trey White is a really good player. He's one of the most talented guys on this team. He's struggling right now for Louisville. It's going to come for him, and you see the last two times down the floor, his mid-range game, his pull-up game, that's what makes Trey White so good, and uh, he's now got 11 points. 41-34, cards back within seven. 11 points in his opening game for Louisville, 11 tonight, here to lead the way. Scored double figures in the two exhibition games for Louisville as well. After his all Pac-12 freshman season, and out of bounds to the baseline, another turnover for the box there, might be a little rattled. Well, and that's what they want to see. Trey White went to help Sky Clark on Huff, so their Huff wasn't open. And when he left him, he got he was fast enough. They did a little switch where Clark got there, and it just kind of rattled Chattanooga just a little bit, and they stepped on the out-of-bounds line. Clark gets the screen all the way to the basket, and Alexis rejects that. Zedek, who had 25 points in the opener for them, only has two tonight. So another steal for the cards. James all the way to the basket on Che, and we'll see if we don't get a foul on Che. Whoa. Where did Zedek come flying from? We're going to get a charge on Mike James. And most importantly, Jody, that will be the third personal foul on Mike James with 16 minutes left here. We'll take a look at that on the other side of the break. We're on the bench with three personal fouls with 16 minutes to go. And his last foul picked up just before we went to break. And mm. Michael Che, I, did he get there? Did he beat him? Does he have legal guarding position there, Jody? Yeah, I know that's a tough call there. It looked like Justin Porterfield under the basket was going to call a block, and Brent Hampton kind of took over coming on the trail. I think from one angle it's a block, and the other angle it's a charge. I mean, I really do think it's that close. Tough break for the cars, so James goes to the bench where he spent the final 11 minutes and 29 seconds of the first half. He still is the card. No, he's the second leading scorer with eight points. Trey White has 11 now, but he is the only card to hit a three tonight. Louisville two for eight from three, and Che's jumper is good, and the freshman from California. A couple big baskets here early in the second half, and back to a nine-point cushion for the Mox. Huntley Hatfield, I'm not sure what he saw there. Trying to get it to Evans, just threw it right to Alexis. Trainer set to check in for the cards of the next dead ball. Here's Jan Zedek. 25 points in an opener, just two tonight. Davis. Alexis fouled Evan. by Evans, and the cards need something here. They need a little burst because right now there's not a lot of energy in this building, and they're struggling down nine with 15 15 to play. And he just um, Reaching in there on Evans, just a little reach. I'm watching Kenny Payne give him some instruction, and uh, that's what he's telling him. Keep those hands up, big fella. Honor Huff all the way to the basket, throws it up, can't get it to go White with another rebound. And who could the burst come from? Will it be Trey White? That's where it's going to have to come from, really, quite honestly. It's going to have to come from Trey White because he's the one that looks like tonight He's in that offensive mindset. Sky in the Clark second half. Yeah. Is, yes, exactly. Sky Clark, just two of ten. It looks a little, uh, a, a little timid there on offense. Oh, Che with the fake. Williams the flyby, and Che with the basket of the paint, and the lead is back to nine. Really, it's been Trey White, Mike James for those first eight minutes, and then no one else has really done much for the Cards tonight. Williams has a couple of baskets. 
He's a guy who could get going. Three off the back of the rim. Shannon A. Now chasing. Let's slow it down for a minute here. They're 10 for 26 from three. Matchup, bad matchup there for Williams. And Alexis goes right by him and scores at the basket to increase the lead back to 11. The largest lead of the night so far for the box has been 12. Tyler Johnson will check in at the next dead ball for the card. How long can Kenny Payne afford to keep Mike James on the bench, Cody? Not long. He really can't. I, I mean, quite honestly, like it's 11. I, I think you, you're getting to a point where you almost have to put him back in here with three fouls. Back out to Che. Che to the basket. And he's going to get fouled by Trey White. Chattanooga up 11 here on Louisville. 18 of 43 from the field. 10 of 26 from three. As you see, they lost seven guys from last year. They got four returnees. Three of those guys played some, you know, logged some key minutes last year. Four transfers in, six freshmen. And yet they lost 79% of their scoring from last season. Coach Earl has done a good job of putting together a really good team. And I do think they were ranked fifth in the SOCON, but they're going to be better than that just because, Kent, nobody really knew kind of what they had with all these newcomers. Michael Che, a 6'2 freshman from Los Angeles, California, is 3-for-3 three for, three for the field in this half. As you see, uh, one of the voters did pick them to win the league, but picked to finish fifth in the league in year number two under Dan Earl. Michael Che has not missed a shot in the second half from the field or the line. And he knocks down that second free throw. And the lead is now 13, which is the largest lead of the night for the Chattanooga Mox. As Rudy Fitzgibbons, a transfer from the Citadel, one of those transfers checks in the game, number 11. Trainer has the ball go through his hands, but White comes up with it. White, the only offense that the Cards have gotten here in the second half, pretty much, other than one Scott Clark basket. And Mike James stays over there on that bench here. 13 minutes to go. What's the cutoff? Is it 12? Is it the under 12 I, I timeout? The under 12, I think it's, it has to be the under 12 timeout. Well, that's a, Some that of the Cards of just here. Yeah, they just they just look a little timid offensively. We're seeing a lot of standing around, not the movement that we've seen. White in the paint, and he walked. That's another turnover. How about this score update? Arizona and Duke tied at 54 right now. Duke, uh, the preseason favorite to win the ACC. Here comes Mike James. He's headed to the scorer's table with 12 and a half minutes to go. We'll see if he can get in before uh, we get a TV timeout at the under 12 or close to it and Huff's three comes off the rim but Alexis flies in for the offensive rebound Scott Clark didn't get a body on him and he puts it up and in and the lead is at 15 right now and does Kenny Pink call a timeout to get Mike James in for this offensive possession or just let this no, play out let this play out if you've got to this point so far but Chattanooga just in a, a really good display of, of being patient and taking what Louisville's given him as well, they have to have everything but the finish. White the rebound can't get it to go. And then Fitzgibbons took it away from Huntley Hatfield. And then it is Brady blocked by Huntley Hatfield. Brady again back out for the three. Oh, goodness gracious. My goodness, he stepped away. Look like Steph Curry pulling the trigger on that one. And that is the sixth triple of the night for Honor Huff, and this is an 18-point game, and now Kenny Payne has to call timeout and get Mike James back in it because the cards are in trouble. There's four field goals in their second half and four turnovers. They trail by 18. Why wait all month long? Get your Black Friday deal today. Transferring with his coach, Dan Earl, came over from VMI and in the same league, his first game for Chattanooga, 
0 for 5 from 3 in that game. Well, tonight he's 6 for 11 from 3. That is a career high. Six triples for him. 22 points. He's one away from his career high of 23 that he had at VMI, but that is a Chattanooga career high. Scott Clark with a miss out of the timeout. Mike field. James back in the game. And James, I thought he was going to get a three, but he drives in on Davis. Scott Clark has struggled offensively all night. James gets the triple try, and after sitting on the bench so long, that thing went off the side of the rim. Scott Clark 2 for 11 from the field, 0 for 2 from 3 with four turnovers. So not a great first 30 minutes for him tonight. And Tyler Kim. Johnson with a steal, Jody, and he's going to get the breakaway layup, and we'll see if that can ignite a little run. He's got the speed and uh, the good uh, good job on defense there from Tyler. Look, I, this is the thing, Kent. Louisville has got to pick it up on the defensive end. Tyler gets a foul there, but to be a little more aggressive, you've got to pick it up on the defensive end for you to do something on the offensive end. A steal there from Tyler, and he goes in for the bucket. By the way, Huff, Huff has 22 points. I said his career high 23. Guess who it was against, Joe? Chattanooga. Chattanooga? I was just going to say. Okay. Huff down the lane. Ball deflected, and then it went back off of Huff, who was out of bounds down on that baseline. So another turnover. Maybe a little opening here for the Cards to make a run, but they're going to have to have someone step up and start scoring. Tyler, the miss, he at least tried to get the offensive rebound, but he couldn't do it. Yeah, but it's, it's, a, it's a lot of one-on-one -on -one stuff on the offensive end, and then Louisville just a step slow on the defensive end. Brady with the aggressive move down the lane, and then ball goes out of bounds, but it will stay here with Chattanooga. 17 seconds on the shot clock, 10.04 left in the game, and the Mox lead Louisville 54 to 38 as Chattanooga won the first five meetings between these two schools, but the Cards have won the last five. Michael Che with the air ball on the baseline, but another offensive rebound. Che had started a couple of threes, Kent. He is just getting whatever he wants against this Louisville defense. 57 to 38, Chattanooga leads it. J.J. Trainer with the three, just the third three of the night for the Cards. And... They're back within 16. Che is four for five from the field in the second half. Including a couple threes. Fitzgibbon with the three in the corner. James with the rebound. Thought trainer might pull that one there as he hit the, hit the one before. Scott Clark in the trainer. Trainer's got the size advantage on Che. And Che, another charge. He's done that a couple times tonight. The we'll crowd doesn't here. agree with it. You'll go bench doesn't agree with it, but he just ducked he, that shoulder. He's there. He, he puts his shoulder into him. That's a charge. Crowd wanted to flop, but some of the fans in the Hollywood seats here arguing as well, including former card Perrin Johnson, Jody. And that's two fouls on Trainer in three seconds there. It's his third of the game. And the seventh foul on the card. So Chattanooga now going to shoot some free throws. They're only three for five in the game so far, but Tyler Millen will go to the line right now for one and a bonus. And Mike James is actually going to come out of the game as Curtis Williams comes back in. I thought they might get Curtis Williams in. I wasn't sure it was going to be for Mike James because Curtis has actually been the one Cardinal, uh, at least in the first half, that was that was active and, and did some positive things. Six points, a couple of rebounds, and a couple of deflections. Manuel Corfor back in too. Huntley Hatfield will go to the bench. He does have 11 rebounds, but just two points on one for five shooting tonight. But Cards leading rebounder is that rebounding now back is even now at 33 all. 
as Millen knocks in the first free throw. So he'll get a second. The lead 17 right now for Chattanooga over Louisville. 12 of 31 from three. We told you they were going to shoot a lot of them. They could shoot them from all different positions on the floor from the one through the five. And boy, oh boy, have they done it. Noah knocks down that second free throw. Akorfor did have three rebounds in his five minutes. Five guys. Looks like some confusion in here about what exactly they want to run. As the shot clock's now at 16 seconds. Not, not really the time to run clock. Down 18 with 8.41 to go. Johnson will try the three. He can hit that. And that one went halfway down and then deflected. And I'm pretty sure it's going to be Louisville ball on the baseline. Shot clock resets to 20, and they'll get another chance of this one. Good look for yeah. Tyler Johnson. It was directly in front of us, and it can't get a better look for him. Ball just doesn't go down. A quarter for the spin in the paint. The air ball. Yeah, without James out there, Williams is the guy maybe who could, who could catch fire if he could get some open shots. Alexis goes baseline and then spent trainer got his hand on it, but couldn't come up with it She has been the star of the second half down the lane and why not just throw it up? But he hurt his back on the play and he is still on the ground And I don't think there was any real contact now. He just landed awkwardly. Like, yeah, just on his hip it. and he's he's holding his right hip He's in quite a bit of pain. Huh? He is. And that was just a really awkward way that he landed. There's 14 points now in the second half, 18 for the game. Miles Shea is putting on a show here. And that basket right there gave him, as you said, 18 points. And their largest lead of the game at 20 as he is now up. And Che will get a round of applause from the crowd here that remains as he limps off, though. He's still, yeah, that doesn't look good. I, we'll take, take a break. Louisville hit. down 20 with 8.07. In the second half, Louisville has 14 points in the second half, and Miles Che has 14 points in the second half. He has 18 in the game, 7 of 12 in the field, 2 of 6 from the 3, and he was injured just before we went to break there. And, uh, we're back in the locker room still. We don't see him out here. So Dan Earl uh, has gotten a heck of a second half from his freshman guard from uh, California. The cards with plenty of work to do because they trail by 20 with eight minutes to play. I love Miles J. His game is fantastic. Tyler Johnson drives in. Trey White kick and a three for White from the corner. You know why one of the things I love, Jay? You know the, the best thing? Originally, he's number 77. Anybody that wears 77, I like that. Well, and they, they just had an issue. This is the first time they won their gold uniform, so apparently there was an issue. So we had a couple number changes from their first game. Jan Zedek, it hasn't worked out for him yet. He scored 25 in their first game, and has only scored two points here tonight so far with that new number. But Michael Chaff, I think, will stick with number 12 it is as Alexa scores. This is a this game. Thought the card might make a run. This has been Maybe. a game where Dennis Evan with Evans with three points and two two points and three rebounds hasn't been great for Louisville as he's been physically getting pushed around down there. But Tyler Johnson is playing. He's he's playing the hardest of any Louisville player right now and on the floor on both uh, on the floor on both ends. Honor Huff with. 22 points, one away from his career high. Alexis with what he feels is a mismatch, and he gets the jump hook to go over White, and it is a 21-point game. Johnson gets to the basket, gets fouled. He'll get two free throws with 6.41 to go. Chattanooga has come into the KFC Yum Center and leads Louisville 65-44. to Ken, I think Coach Payne knew this was a tough matchup for his team at this point, but I don't think he felt like that they, I think he felt like they could play better on the defensive end than what they have here. And quite honestly, as bad as they've been on the defensive end, the offensive end hasn't been much better at 30.5, 30.8% uh, from the free field. And now just 9 of 14 from the free throw line. Johnson knocks in the first. 
with Mike James back in the game. All eight of his points came in the first eight minutes of the game before he picked up two quick fouls. Johnson knocks in the second free throw, 65 to 46. And apparently, playing the Southern Conference team here in the KFCM Center in November is not a great thing. Furman came in here a couple years ago and, and knocked off Louisville. And now it is Chattanooga with what would appear to be a... I would love to see more a turnover. Millen just kind of one of their worst plays of the game. Cards on the run and Trainer with the slam. And Louisville is back within 17. So I'd love to see Louisville get out a little bit more on transition. Try to force the tempo and force the issue a little bit here. Play with a little more urgency. And that's what they did on that possession. Melton misses and that's another rebound for Hotley Hacker, which will give him his career high 12. Clark all the way. Zedek did a pretty good job just kind of maintaining his position, and Clark can't get it to go. And then Huff speeds by everybody, but Alexis with the follow slam, and the big fella has 16 points for Chattanooga as their lead is back up to 19. Not exactly the response you thought you'd get from Louisville. Coming off the dramatic one-point win over UMBC on Monday night, Jody. As James goes to the basket and scores with a chance at a three-point play. But you kind of were hoping they'd get a little boost of confidence from that win on Monday night. Or at least Louisville fans were thinking. That. Well, and, and again, 94 points. They they got to the free throw line a ton. They drew a ton of fouls. And tonight, it just hasn't been that. They haven't had much on the offensive end. And they're still struggling as they did the other night on the defensive end. Davis comes back in for Chattanooga. Yeah, Alexis will stay on the floor. He has 16 points and nine rebounds. Millen with 10 rebounds for them. Uh, you mentioned Huntley Hatfield his career high earlier. He has now 12 rebounds as equal. Chattanooga is now out rebounding Louisville, 36 to 35, and the margin was was pretty large in the Cards' favor early on. James completes the three-point play, so he now has 11 points. Still just three personal fouls. Sat for quite a bit of time in this one. In foul trouble. Huff for three, got it. That's his seventh. That's a new career high for him. He has 25 points. Yeah, I can see why Coach Earl wanted him with him from BMI. Boy, he is a player. Mike James, a three from the corner. James with his third three of the night for Louisville. He's got 14 now. Turns out that last Huff three was almost like an ejector seat for some fans here as they're up trying to beat the traffic. 16 points now with five minutes to go. The lead for Chattanooga. Alexis gets Huff back door, the kick in the corner. Brady almost turned it over, but Davis comes up with it on the baseline. He does turn it over. And with the shot clock violation. Here is Huff, career high, seven three-pointers. He's got 25 now, nine of 17 from the field. And remember early on, Kent, two shots. He had really close to the basket. He airballed both of them. Since then, he can't miss seven of 12 from three. Chattanooga to take, about it. take a timeout. Up 70-54. Giddy up, but he also has 18 points here tonight. 14 of those, 18 in the second half as Chattanooga led by six at the half. And right now, they lead 70-54 to with 4.39 to play. Louisville with the ball after forcing that shot clock violation of the turnover. They get the dunk for Jim J. Trainer off that baseline out-of-bounds play. And Trainer has come alive here in the last couple minutes. Yeah, he really has. Uh, he was struggling throughout the first half. Didn't play a ton of minutes. Tommy's put him back in, though. He's uh, been active. Seven points here in the last few minutes for J.J. Trainer, but the deficit is still 14. Is it an insurmountable one as Alexis misses the jump hook? Cards are going to have to hit a three or two to get to get it cut into this 14-point deficit in the final four minutes. So far, that has been trainer misses the two. Hank Conley Atfield with a new career high now. 
13 rebounds. White's open up top with James Watson, but he's going to go all the way on Che. Can't get it to go, and Alexis with another rebound, and he now has a double-double tonight. And I think Mike James thought there was going to be contact, and he was trying to draw the contact and almost kind of forgot he was just wide open right there. Could have made an easy bucket. Or he could have kicked it out to White as well. Cards 5 of 15 from 3. Chattanooga 13 for 32. Three different U of L players have hit triples tonight. White, Trainer, and James. <laughs> and that's another rebound for Huntley Half. That's 14 rebounds for him. White had that one knocked away. It'll be Cards ball on the baseline. They trail it at 14 with three minutes to play. That's going to be a great game between, between UConn and Indiana, so you got a tough one there. And you come home, New Mexico State. An and entirely new Bellarmine. roster for yeah. them. And Bellarmine, and, and then you're at DePaul before you finish up. Arkansas State, Pepperdine, and Kentucky here on December 21st. All right, here we go. Mike James, J.J. Trainer, Trey White, Sky Clark, and Brandon Huntley Hatfield. And Huntley Hatfield with the size advantage, and he gets in the paint and scores. Just his second bucket of the night. He has been a little more aggressive all on the offensive end, or at least he was in the first half, but four points and 14 rebounds now. This is a 7-0 run from the car for the Cards here to cut the lead to 12 with 2.40 to go. And clearly every possession is pretty big from here on out, and we're going to get an issue with some condensation on the floor there. We'll get that wiped up and then... Shot clock is at 14 seconds. There's Miles J. We told you a second ago. He's back on after leaving for a second after he hit the floor hard. He turns it over. And Huntley Hatfield's going to get the breakaway dunk here. And Louisville's back within 10. The fans who've hung around to stay for the end of this one are up in another turnover off the press. Scott Clark with the basket, and he's fouled. And it's an eight-point deficit, and Clark will go to the line to try to make it seven. And just a hustle, hustle, hustle play. Huntley Hatfield getting it started, and he gets the dunk after getting the deflection to get the steal. And then Scott Clark with a bucket, and he's going to get... A free throw. Demetrius Davis will come in the game for the Mox. Randy Brady heads to the bench. Scott Clark, a chance to cut that lead to seven. This is an 11-0 run for Louisville and a 14-3 run over the last 320. They've held Chattanooga scoreless for just over three minutes. The largest lead was 21 with 6.52 to go at 65-44. And the Cards have cut that to seven. And Chattanooga's had some issues with the pressure. And the Cards are starting to apply it. Shea waving everybody off. Gets across the timeline with a couple seconds to spare. 20 out on the shot clock as Clark's bodying him up. Alexis has... 16 points and 10 rebounds. But get it to him. He's got Davis with five on the shot clock. The floater run, rattles out. Trey White with the rebound in between two mocks. And here come the cards. 144 to go. Big rebound from Trey He's... White. Oh, the three in the corner rattles out. Huntley Hatfield keeps it alive. Alexis dives on the ground for it. And the possession arrow favors the mocks. With 1.34 left to play, Dan Earl was trying to get a timeout, but they called the jump ball first. Yeah, they called the jump ball first. Does he still want first. a timeout? He does not want a timeout. It'll be Chattanooga ball, or that three from the corner from James. Oh, looked, it looked good, Chance. And it was a good shot from the guards in transition coming down. A great job on the defensive end again. Huntley Hatfield getting some being active and getting his hand on a, on a, uh, on a ball, on a pass.
Louisville bench wanting to walk there on Shea. It was close. This is about the last possession. You're going to be able to let him dribble out the shot clock here. Ten seconds on that clock. Huff to the basket. Kicks it on Zedek. He has not hit a three yet tonight, but he has now. Jan Zedek only had two points after 25 in the opener, and the Pepperdine grad transfer knocks in what would appear to be a dagger with yeah. 111 left. That is the dagger right there in Louisville. Let them play the possession out, and again, the Cardinals just leave a shooter. He's the sixth player to hit a three tonight for uh, Chattanooga. And, and, and can, they can all shoot it. He was three for four. The scouting report is don't leave him. And what do the cards do? They continue to do that. It's now 14 of 34 for the game. And the mock six for 11 from three in the second half. All right, quick reset. A 10-point lead for Chattanooga. 1-11 to play. Each team with just one time out left. No fouls to give both teams in the bonus, but not the double bonus. Just seven team fouls each. And the possession arrow favors the cards after that jump ball we had on the last Louisville possession. Louisville with 15 turnovers in the game. Chattanooga with 16. And the cards with a 40-39 rebound edge. Brandon Huntley Hatfield, a career high 14 boards for Louisville. Sky Clark all the way for the lay-in. And the lead is back to eight. Now it's going to be, you try to turn them over quickly, but you're going to have to foul pretty quick to extend this game because you're down by eight with 54 seconds to go. You can't let them run 20 more seconds off the shot clock. And the bench is trying to tell them the entire possession. The bench has been trying to tell them to foul, and they have not done it yet. They're not listening until Huntley Hatfield does. And they just they wasted 25 seconds. Still ran seconds, off a few more seconds. seconds, yeah. Uh, the bench, though, can't. Danny Manning, Nolan Smith, Kenny Payne, all of them up yelling when they got to half court to foul. And Mike James and Sky Clark just continued to guard and didn't foul. All right, here's Jan Zivik. He will go to the line, and he knocks in the first free throw. That's his first free throw attempt tonight. And his first free throw attempt of the season did not attempt one in their opener game in which he had 25 points but he was a 77 percent free throw shooter at pepperdine and he knocks those two in easily and jan zedek who had two points just a second ago right now has seven and the lead is back to 10 and the cards are taking their time trying to get a shot here down 10 with 30 seconds to go but clark's three got it so is there anything to take Still a little hill to climb here to win this game, but is there anything to take from the last couple of minutes and the run that Louisville has made to get back? Well, they have not from given a 21 up. point deficit. Yeah, as we see Trey, uh, Trey White kicking it to Sky Clark, they're going to look at it. Well, it looked like at his it. foot was on the line. On the line just the baseline replay I saw yeah. right there. Yeah, they're, that's why they uh, they're looking at it. But look, this is a team they haven't they haven't quit. They've shown some fight here as. Uh, and I also, I think, a two-pointer is what we're told. So our score is correct here. The lead is eight. And Jay foul there by Jets in the fourth foul on James. And there's a there's a perfect example, and you can tell the guys, Huntley Hatfield, they're all looking at him. Alexis gets the ball. You want to foul the big guy. He is over he had well, shot a free and, throw. And he also not I mean it's a long shot that you're gonna extend this game, but you don't want to get James his fourth foul. Correct. Jay to the line, he is two for two from the line so far tonight. He has 18 points. 14 of those 18 in the second half and the freshman guard from Los Angeles with a chance to put the mocks back up by 10 if he can hit them both he hits the first one to make it a nine point game 16 from the field Jody yeah he's got it he, he has got to be the one guy Trey White better in the second half only four of 12 but again these two guys combine nine of 28 for White and Clark they have got to shoot the ball better for Louisville to be in any game on their schedule, much less against the better teams as they get going.
Then Clark with the miss on the front end of the one and one and the rebound by Randy Brady and he'll get two shots at the other end as the mocks are now in the double bonus. Randy Brady, a 6'5 sophomore from Chattanooga. Knocks in the second free throw to extend that lead to 11. I got to say, here's one thing. So impressed with Dan Earl and, the, and this team and how well they are coached. This is a Chattanooga team that's got a ton of new parts, and they're going to win a lot of games this season. Clark's three off the front of the rim. Zedek with a rebound, another foul on trainer. And John Zedek, who I mentioned a second ago, Jody, two points just two minutes ago, and he's right now has... Seven points, five rebounds. Impressed that coming off the 25-point effort in their open, he didn't force anything tonight. No, he did not. He, he let the offense go to some other guys who were hot. And uh, Shea with uh, 20 points. Huff with 25. And that's five on Mike James. Oh, no, that was five on Trainer. I was going to say, why is Mike James? I thought they caught it on... Trainer showed us a little spurt. Seven points, though, and yeah, he's 20 be, minutes of action. He's got to be more consistent, though. That's what they need from him. He can give them energy. He likes to get the dunks. He can get on the rebound. He's actually shooting the ball better from three-pointer. He's got to be He's got to be more consistent for Louisville. See, it misses the first free throw, but... Hey, they miss a shot a second. in the second half, huh? Goodness gracious. Seems like 57.7% from the field, including 6 of 11 from three. Maybe they'll celebrate on their way home with some Sugar's Ribs in Chattanooga. If you're driving through there, make sure you stop. James with the three gets it to go. And Mike James now with 17 points. That was the sixth triple of the night for the Cards. And another, really, at, at this point. Well, it's not one, rather, it's not a, rather if you foul or not. It's if you're going to foul, why waste another three or four seconds? You know what I mean? Like, and that's the thing. And Coach Payne, I think, was telling them to foul right there. Che with a chance to increase his career high. Already 20 points with a freshman, make it 21. After a four-point first half. Good to see him back out there, though, because that injury looked like it might be pretty serious the way he went off the floor into the locker room. Spins that one around. 22 points for him, 47 for the box backcourt here tonight. Trey Wright forces one up. He's going to get a foul call from across the court. I think his foot was over the line, though, by the time he shot it. So we'll see if he gets two shots or three. Two shots for Trey Wright with 2.8 seconds left here. The one thing he's really done well tonight is shoot free throws, 7 of 7 from the line. The Cards, though, with just 18 free throw attempts after 39 the other night. Yep. And if they're not going to hit threes and they're playing against a team who's going to hit 14 of them, they're going to have to be a little more aggressive going to the basket and get some fouls and some more opportunities at the line. So White with 16 points, and he'll get two more free throws here. And ends his perfect night at the line. Yeah, some of the things they did well the other night, they haven't shown tonight, you know, of getting to the basket, drawing the fouls, and that Not kind of thing. Not a lot. There wasn't a lot great tonight. I mean, Mike James started off great, but then the foul trouble took him out of it. He was never really able to get it, even though he does have 17 points. Wasn't a consistent effort from him. Oh, goodness, we're going to get another foul. One more foul with 2.1 seconds left to play. He'll send Sam Alexis to the line. He has 16 points and 11 rebounds. The 11 rebounds ties his career high. Huntley Hatfield again with a career high 14 rebounds for Louisville. Positive side for him, 24 rebounds in the first two games, Joey. White the rebound off White, almost another turnover, but not quite because the buzzer saves them from that. But look, Global's got a long way to go. Chattanooga won a great effort.